Good morning, people of God. Welcome to our Sunday, September 12th, 2021, 10 a.m. service. You are joining us here at Journey United Methodist Church. I am your lay leader, Chandra Edmonds, and our pastor is Pastor Michael Parker II. Today, we will have Minister Karen Robinson as our preacher, our very own. So I do welcome all of you today. Our call to worship is as follows. Come, let's praise God together. And the people of God will say, for God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's tell stories of God's power and majesty, his mighty acts throughout history. And the people will say, for God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's remember the compassion he has shown toward us, his mercy and unfailing love, generation after generation. The people will say, for God is great and worthy of our praise. Let's pass these stories along to our children and grandchildren so that they too may come to know and love our God. And together we will say, for God is great and worthy of our praise. We will now hear a selection from the Journey United Methodist Worship Team.
It is now prayer time. Let's clear our hearts and minds as we come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything you have done for us. Thank you for the grace and mercy that we have not earned, yet you have given it to us tax-free with no bounty on our heads. We thank you also, Lord, for the many things you have bestowed upon us day to day, the breath that we take, the eyes that blink, the ears that hear, and the mouth in order to speak. Let our tongue be worthy of your praise. Let our tongue not say anything that is despising to others. Let us use our tongues to lift people up. We also thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you have blocked us from, some blessings we didn't need right away as we did not know how to be good caretakers of them. But we are thankful that when the time came, that you are right there to lift us up and guide us and let us know that we are prepared to lead the way that you expect us to lead. We also thank you for the little boy, the three-year-old boy in Australia who was found alive in the Australian bush. He was lived alive for three days. That is nothing but a miracle, Lord. We thank you for all of the people that have been rescued from Afghanistan. Because, yes, there are some people that have stayed behind. However, those that you have brought out of the of the fire are here to thank you. They came out untarnished. We also pray, Lord, for those victims of coronavirus. Every single day we hear new reports of things happening in hospitals, in homes, on the side of the road. But we know, Lord, that you are with us every step of the way. You will not forsake us. Teach your people how to pray and get down on their knees and ask you for your grace and your mercy. We also thank you, Lord, for those of us who are not struggling. We thank you. You know, some things we think that we have and we want more. However, you have provided us with everything we need, and for that, we give praise. And last but not least, Lord, 
We would like to pray for the hurricane and flood victims along the whole eastern shore of the United States. Please comfort their hearts as they right now do not know what to do. They are living in a state of depression. But we know that you will come down like the mighty angel that you are. And you will lift their hearts up and they will look back and wonder, how did they make it through? We also pray for the California wildfires. We, not, we don't know exactly how they started, but we know, Lord, you have a purpose for everything that you created here on this earth. And in the end, everything will be just fine. So please calm the hearts of all of those who are suffering from devastation and loss. And also, Lord, help them to understand that there is no one else here that can really help them as much as you can. When they are sitting in their dark, dark corners, their dark rooms, let them get down on their knees and say the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is coming from Esther chapter 4. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city, and he cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate, for no one was allowed to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. And in every province, wherever the king's command and his decree reached, there was a great mourning among the Jews, with fasting and weeping and lamenting, lamenting, and many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. When Esther's young women and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for her talk, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend her and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what this was and why it was. Her talk went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her and command her to go to the king to beg his favor and plead with him on behalf of her people. And her talk went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to her talk and commanded him to go to Mordecai and say, All the king's servants and the people of the, God, of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law to be put to death except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter so that he may live. But as for me, I have not been called to come into the king these 30 days. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. 
Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When 
into the house to worship the Lord this morning, to give all honor and praise to our God. I would just like to thank the pastor for opening up his pulpit, um, our pastor, Michael Parker II. Um, I don't take it for granted for him to share this pulpit and to walk along with him in this ministry. And surely don't take it for granted that God has called us for such a time as this. Amen. Um, our worship leader read the scripture, and so I'm therefore going to move into focusing on um, verses 13 through 17 of chapter 4, the text of Esther. But before we even get started, let's just go to the throne. Father God, we just thank you, God, for this day. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity that you give your people. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that you have placed the word in my spirit, Lord. And Lord, I want to do just. Save me, Lord God, from fearing so much of my own frailties that I forget your mighty power. 
Help me to trust your care and foresight. Allow me to speak the words which I believe that you have given me and leave me to you, leave to you results and consequences. Yes, spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Amen. On last Sunday, Pastor Parker opened this month's preaching series on examining the general rules of the United Methodist Church. Pastor taught and preached on first rule, do no harm, on John Wesley, three simple rules, and gave such a powerful message titled Collateral Damage using the book of um, Jonah. Leaving me to reflect on who would have thought our decisions could cause harm. As Pastor Parker mentioned last week, we all can attest to. These three simple rules aren't all that simple in our ability to live each one of them out in our lives. We better know that we need Jesus our Lord and Sally daily to help us to navigate just life period and certainly trying to incorporate these rules and practice it in our lives. Today, I will speak on rule number two, do good. Our Methodist discipline states, by doing good, by being in every kind merciful after their power, as they have opportunity doing good of every possible sort and as far as possible to all men, to their bodies of the ability which God giveth by giving food to the hungry, by clothing the naked, by visiting or helping them that are sick or in prison, to their souls by instructing, reproving, or exhorting all we have any intercourse with, trampling under our foot that enthusiastic doctrine that we are not to do good unless our hearts be free to it. By doing good, especially to them that are of the household of faith or groaning so to be, employing them preferably to others, buying one of another, helping each other in businesses, and so much the more because the world will love its own and them only. By all possible diligence and frugality, that the gospel be not blamed. By running with patience the race which sets before them, denying themselves, and taking up their cross daily, submitting to bear the reproach of Christ, to be as the filth and outscoring of the world, and looking that men should say all manner of evil of them falsely for the Lord's sake. It is expected of all who desire to continue in these societies, that they should continue to evidence their desire of salvation. While John Wesley challenges us to do good, Jesus Christ commands us to do good and do so to those who aren't necessarily good to us or to you. Jesus Christ said to his disciples and to us, but I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you and bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you in Luke 6, 27 through 28. The story about Esther is one example in the Bible to help us to understand about practicing rule number two, do good. Although God is not mentioned in the book of Esther, his presence and power was seen throughout the book. The story of Esther begins in 483 B.C., 103 years after the Jews were cap captured by Nebuchadnezzar. 
54 years at the Zerubbabel led the first group of exiles back to Jerusalem. And before the return of Ezra and Nehemiah in 458 BC and 444 BC, respectfully. Esther lived during the reign of the Persian king Azurus, also known as Xerxes, who reigned from 486 to 465 BC. There were many gods worship in the Middle East and in Persia. The prophet Daniel was captive in Babylon as it fell to Persia in 539 BC, but he died shortly after that event and was not present when Esther's story happened. Therefore, no prophets were around to speak on the behalf of God or speak for God. Esther's parents were among those exiles who remained in Persia instead of returning to Judah. Even though King Cyrus signed a decree allowing the Jews to return to their homeland. The beginning of the text reveals that Esther wasn't the queen. Queen Vesti was. It was customary for the king to have a 180-day celebration before going to any war. This celebration was to show the king's grandeur, his power, his wealth, his majesty, and well as to plan the strategies for the war they were about to enter. After the celebration, the king had a seven-day banquet with no representation that we know of, like here in the workplace, representation to bring in women and bring people of different ethnicity and race, all not at King Zertai's um, banquet. There was no representation of women. It was an all-male party. At this banquet, King Xerxes summoned the Queen Vashti to appear before him and his guests to display her beauty and royalty. Apparently, Xerxes was not concerned about Vashti's feelings, and I'm sure no woman's feelings. Today's women would consider it sexual harassment or being in a hostile work environment if we were so summoned to parade before an all-male party. She refused to come, and the king was furious. Queen Vesti was therefore decomposed, meaning she was banished from his presence by decree. So King Xerxi was in search for a new king. Esther was chosen for her beauty and grace. Though Xerxi never knew she was Jew, Esther, an orphan, was raised by her cousin Mordecai, and she worked, who worked for Xerxes in the palace. Don't you know that although God's name was not mentioned through this book, his hands was on it. God had a plan. One of the king's advisors, Haman, did not like Mordecai because he refused to kneel down to honor Haman. Therefore, Haman, an Agagite, descendant of Agai, the king of the Amalekites, were enemies to the Israelites. Convinced the king and a decree was put into law to annihilate all the Jews. Mordecai refused to bow down before man and remain faithful to God. Worship no other God but God, according to God's commandment set off a series of events that challenged Esther. You know, in our Sunday school, church school lesson, we studied on Esther. We talked about Esther and a point that stood out strong to me. The enemy wants our worship. <laughs> he wants us to praise him. but Or praise man. Man wants us to praise man. But let's get it right. We better um, praise the almighty God who is our creator and our maker. When we give God the praise, you receive vastly more than you give. The principle is illustrated in the life of Mordecai. By withholding praise from one who didn't deserve it, the evil Haman, Mordecai reserved his praise for the one who deserved it, the almighty God. 
Mordecai was aware of the king's edict to annihilate all the Jews dressed in sackcloth and at the king's gate, which was for, for which was for, forbidden, excuse me, Mordecai mourns the soon to be fate of his people. Esther got wind of it and sent clothes to Mordecai, but he refused them. In turn, in turn, he requested Esther to talk to the king, talk him out, talk to the king about getting him to turn that decree around that edit about killing the Jews. But Esther was worried. No one, even the queen, talked to the king without being invited by him. Mordecai convinced her that God had put her in a position as queen for such this very reason. Esther gathered all of her courage and told the king about Haman's plot. And as the people would be saved. You know, the tables turned quickly on Haman. You know, to sum this all up, he was hung on the gallows meant for Mordecai. You know, you better be careful when you try to dig a hole for somebody else. You may be the very person that's going to fall right in it. The royal order was overridden and Mordecai won Haman's job. The job that Haman thought he would have. Now, see, don't you see how God's hand was all in that? You know, when you think you already struck it and, 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 and permanent in something, and God moved you right on out the way to put you in it. You know, all we have to do is do what God has called us to do. Don't bow down to those aren't worthy. Don't bow down to those who haven't created and made you. Don't bow down to those who is not your provider. Amen. You better bow down to the almighty God. Oh, Lord. The royal order was overridden and Mordecai won Haman's job. Esther stepped out in courage, proving God can save his people even when the odds seems impossible. Esther showed herself to be brave and strong in face of such a adversity. She trusted God, followed his calling on her life. God used her to save an entire nation of Israel's, Israelites from being destroyed. In our effort to be do-good people, the story of Esther reveals the following points that came to me. First, consider doing for others beside yours and yourselves only. We can't inwardly look what is going to be good for us. You know, God called us to the bigger picture. He wants us to do on behalf of others. Let me tell you, if we take care of God's business, he'll take care of our business. In chapter 413, Mordecai said, do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. Esther is a Jew, and she too soon will succumb to the same fate as her people if she didn't take a stand. In challenging situations, people, don't be selfish. Don't look inwardly and, and have that self-pity about, oh, I'm going through this. Because let me tell you, look to God for help and for direction. He will help you. He will guide you. He will direct you. And let me tell you, like I said, if you do God's business, he'll take care of your business. God called us for a bigger purpose besides ourselves. He called us for his purpose. Amen. Number two. Recognize there are windows of opportunity to act. In chapter 414, Mordecai told Esther, and who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Now was the time for Esther to go to the king to save her people. It was God's plan. He put us in a position and in the right time and at the right place. All we have to do is step forward and step in it. Stop procrastinating on the three W's, what, when, and where. See God, he'll tell you what you need to do, when you need to do it, and where it will happen. 
All we have to do is trust God for the results. Amen. Move. Don't tarry in those places. Sometimes that window is so small that it doesn't allow for us to stay in any one place any long period of time. Because then the window will close. But let me tell you, God said he will set his word out to accomplish that which he will it. And it will not return to him void. So look, allow God to use you. Move in him. Don't have him drop you and go somewhere else. Move in the purpose and the things of God. Number three, be informed in order to make wise godly decisions. Research and become informed about possible impacts that can circumvent your purpose and your mission. Back in chapter 4, 5, Esther ordered the king's unit who was assigned to her to find out what and why Mordecai was mourning. Mordecai provided the details with documentation, commanding her to go before the king. You can't go haphazardly and half-stepping. When you go out and do about the business of God, you have to be informed about the things that you're going before. Do your research. Do your due diligence in everything. Become aware. It's just like us studying the word of God. We need to know the word. We can't trust what people say and the things that they do. We have to stand on the word and know the word for ourselves. That's our investigation. That's our research. Luke even said, when, before he even started writing the chronicles about Jesus Christ, in Luke 1, 3, he said, I have thoroughly investigated everything. Ah, the word calls us to do our due diligence, to do our investigation, to do our research, so we can be informed godly people. Amen. And my fourth and final point. That God brought to me, pray and fast to seek to know what God wants you to do. And then act. move, go on with God has destined you and purpose you into. Chapter 416 said Esther sent instructions to Mordecai to gather the people for them to pray and fast for three days and nights for and with her and her young women for the mission. Do what God wants and trust him for the results. We can't go out and think we can do things on our own. Seek God for the directions and the answers. And wait for him to give you the word. And then move. Get beyond our feelings. Get beyond what we think and care about what others think. And be obedient to what God wants for us. Because guess what? It ain't about us. It is not for us. It's for something bigger than all of us. Do what God wants. I will go to, Esther said, after seeking God, I will go to the king, though it is against the law. She said, if I perish, I perish. You know how I equate that? If I perish, I perish. In spite of what people say about you and God called you to it, don't worry about what they say. We're going to have naysayers, gossipers, and everything else about the mission that God has purposed and walk you into it. And let me tell you, sometimes we think we're going to be walking with the people that have been walking with us all along. Let me tell you, sometimes that don't even happen. huh? God bring new people into your lives to fulfill his purpose. So trust God in the mission, in the call on your life. And I tell you, what brought me here to this scripture was that I was feeling a burden about all that has been transpiring in in the news and that we know of, um, our crime in our communities, black on black crimes. But not only that, the systemic racism that is going on and how people, black and brown people are suffering as a result just for being who they are and what they are in terms of the color of their skin. Maybe even um, their whatever walk they walk in their lives, whether it's economic, social, or whether it's, it's, it's race, no matter what it is, it has burdened me. 
young kids and babies are being killed in our communities, on our streets. I say, whatever that burden that you carry, it also prompts us into ministry. Burden to do good, people. Burden to do good as God is using you in the vineyard. It's all about kingdom building. Amen. Your burdens may be new ministry. You've been sitting on for a long, long time. Let that burden turn into something good. I I, I like that John Lewis, um, um, and Lord, forgive me, I can't think of it right now, but it's the same concept. Uh, Good trouble, good trouble, same as burden to do good. Let our burdens propel us, but not us going out on our own. Let God use us to fulfill the purpose that he has called us to. Because it's, a, it's, it's praying time, people. It's kingdom building. It's bringing people into, the, into relationship with Jesus Christ right now. Those who feel hopeless. And we hear a lot of our young folks feeling hopeless in hopeless situations. Sometimes that their minds is warped around thinking that, well, you know, what good is it? I'm going to get killed anyway. I have heard that language. But Jesus is our hope, our peace, our comfort. Jesus is the one we got to introduce people to Jesus and we have to meet people where they are. Amen. In closing, in order to do good, we must love God and love one another. God commands us in Mark 12, 30 through 31. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. As we mature in Jesus Christ, it's a continuous process, people. We start developing in a Christ-like love, agape. Love you. God bless you. Beloved, I know that your heart, that your life, that your spirit has been blessed and pricked. As Minister Robinson has just delivered a powerful word to us today as she has challenged us to both be and do good in this world. Certainly, if anybody has shown us how to be good, it's Esther. And we are grateful to God for such a powerful and life-changing word today. Maybe you are joining us for worship and and you're not connected to the God that is able to make you be and do the good that you can do and be in this world. I'd like to introduce you to him. If you're in need of a relationship with Jesus Christ or if you need to connect with a good church home, we would love to have you be a part of our family here at Journey Church. And guess what? You can live literally anywhere in this world and still be fully connected with our church family. We would love the opportunity to love on you. I would be honored to say I was your pastor. I can tell you this church would be so proud to say that you were part of our family. Here's how you can do it. If that's you and you need a relationship with Jesus Christ or you'd like to connect with our church home, all you've got to do right now in that comment box is write the word connect. C-O-N-N-E-C-T. Come on, don't wait until next week. Don't push this off until next month. Today is your day. Come on, connect with us and take the journey of faith with us. And we together will see what God can do. Come on, I'd love to pray with you. Let's pray. God, I believe that you love me. You love me enough that you died for me. You love me enough that you were buried for me. And you love me so much that you got up for me. So come into my life. Save my life. Change my life. Make me brand new. I want to be a part of your family. And I believe by faith that I am now saved. 
My life is no longer the same. I'm a part of God's family. Thank you, God, for the gift of salvation and adoption. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My brother, my sister, if that's your first time praying the prayer of salvation, let me be the first one to say welcome to the family. We are so excited and we want to celebrate the decision that you've just made. So make sure you connect with us so that we can connect with you and celebrate as heaven is doing right now for the decision that you've just made to give Jesus your entire life. We know that you have been blessed in worship Today, what a powerful worship, amazing singing, strong, powerful word. The presence of God is with us even in our homes today. Listen, I know that you felt God in that sanctuary that you've created right in your home, in your space. And we are grateful that God has not forgotten to visit us exactly where we are. As always, we invite you to stay connected with us here at Journey Church, and here's how you can do that. Check us out online at www.journeyeverywhere.org. Again, that's www. Dot journey everywhere dot org. There's an image that's appearing on your screen now with that website. Check us out there. We would love to connect with you and to see what God can do in your life. Those that desire to give to our ministry and those that do give, we thank you. We are so grateful. Listen, we would not be able to do any of what we do in this world if it were not for your spiritual investment. And we are thankful for your consistency in giving. Those that have a desire to continue giving, we invite you to do so one of three ways. You can mail your offering directly to the church. That address is appearing on the screen. You can give on our website. Again, that's www.journeyeverywhere.org. There's a link for online giving there. Or you can give on Givelify. We ask that you look for us under the name of our mother church on Givelify. That's United Methodist Church of the Redeemer. You can sow your gifts there. And again, we thank you and know this for certain. You are sowing into good, ripe, and fertile ground here at Journey Church. We invite you to join us here next week for worship. Guess what? We'll be back live in the sanctuary. That's right. We'll be back for in-person worship next Sunday right here. Join us as we celebrate International Sunday. That's right. We are celebrating the God of all nations as we lift up the amazing heritages of those that are a part of our church family. We'll be blessed to have the Reverend Dr. Maidstone Mulanga, Director of Communications for the Council of Bishops of the United Methodist Church, as our morning preacher. Our worship team's got some awesome things planned. Listen, you don't want to miss it. Plan to be right here with us next Sunday at 10 a.m. as we lift up International Sunday. As always, beloved, we invite you to stay connected with us. There are a wealth of ministry opportunities that that are happening here at Journey. Some of those opportunities are appearing on your screen now, and we invite you to plan to be a part with us. Come on, we're doing great things here at Journey, and we can take it greater if you would be a part with us. Again, family, we thank you for worshiping with us today. We know your heart has been blessed. Come on, have you been blessed today? Has your soul been encouraged? Do you feel all right? Feel like you can go on? That's what it's all about. God has been faithful to meet us in worship yet again. And we thank God for certainly we could not do this if God did not show up. And so we're grateful for the presence of God with us today. Receive now this blessing. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and may the fellowship of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with each of you, my father's children, now and forever. Amen. Have a great week. 